Good morning. The Bible says, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. And that's what we've been really focusing on, the practical side. Hopefully what we've been sharing has been something you can apply to your life. How can I learn to know God? <clears throat> I want to share something before, before we get into our, our talk this morning that I just want to make sure I clarify because I think it's so important uh, when it comes to understanding the character of God. I said something last night, and I believe it, but I want to make sure it's, cl it's clear what I was saying. We talked about God being a rewarder and not a destroyer. Um, and what I meant by that is that it's God's desire to reward. It's God's desire to bless, but that does not mean there will never be a time where God will have to destroy. It's a strange act. It's not something that God wants to do. The Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 11 and verse 18, it says God will destroy those who destroy the earth. And so God in his justice, uh, it de justice demands that there comes a time that if he, God's desires to destroy sin, but if man chooses to unite and, and cling to sin, then God has to, he will destroy, man unfortunately be destroyed with the sin. And this is the reason why. If God did not destroy sin and the sinners attached with sin, you know what, what would end up happening with sinners and sin? They would not only destroy those around them, they would eventually destroy themselves. Um, but it's not God's desire. It's not God's desire. We have to understand that. And so often we, we treat God when he comes to us as though, is God going to do something to harm us? No, no, no. God's desire is to bless. It's a strange act for God to destroy. But even in his destruction is that which is even best for the sinner. And that's a whole other sermon in itself. But I just want to make sure that was clear. <clears throat> this morning I want to share a topic that I'm really excited to share. It's one that I always enjoy sharing. And in fact, someone asked me if I could share this topic, uh, this testimony. So I want to share it with you this morning. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and have a word of prayer. And I'm going to go ahead and kneel if you just want to bow your heads as we pray. Our Father in heaven, I thank you for Jesus. Thank you for your, your loving kindness and how you've shown your kindness to us through your son. You've been showing your kindness through, to us this week. And I want to ask once again in your mercy that you show your kindness to us again this morning. We thank you for hearing us in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the experiences in my life that has really brought me to the point um, where, where it's helped me to learn the voice of God. I think it's hard to, to, to come to a point where you know God unless you learn how to discern his voice. And one of those experiences really, that has really helped me to discern the voice of God, to know God, um, is the experience of how God brought me to Washita Hills. In fact, I used to be so excited about sharing this story I used to love to go to other people, not to just to share my story, but I used to love to hear other people's stories. It's like, how did God bring you here? It's like, you know, at least uh, I know when I was in school here, it's like no one had an ordinary story of how they got to Washington Hills. Everyone has some sort of interesting story, and I used to just love to hear people tell their story, and then, you know, they ask, well, what's your story? And I used to be so excited to share it. And I want to share that story with you this morning. And believe it or not, that story begins when I was in high school. When I was in junior, a junior in high school, I think the year was uh, 2001, I believe. I get to school when I was in, when I was in high school, and they have the work program, some of your vocational uh, class, I don't know, vocational class, vocational area, I think is what the proper way to calling that. But we had one when I was in high school, and I can remember I got to school a little bit late, and so as they were going through all of the, the work areas, I really didn't have an option, and the only option left for me was to canvas. And um, I wasn't a really outgoing person. I was like, oh, I'm not really sure about canvassing, but my father used to be a call porter, and I'd, I'd done some things with him. So I was like, ah, oh, this should be pretty easy. It was not easy. And I can remember that I was, I was, in my mind, looking back, I was like, wow, I was a terrible canvasser. I mean, I can't tell you how many houses I skipped. I probably skipped more houses than knocked on, on doors. And, you know, I was just really, I was what they call, I think they still call this a marshmallow. Anyone have heard that term? You know, so I would see someone, and they would be coming to the door, and it just looked like they didn't want to open the door, so I was like, oh, go to the next door. I think they looked like they were going to reject me, right? 
Um, I was just a terrible counselor. I, I did other things like, um, you know, talk to a, a friend of mine. I remember telling a friend of mine once, I don't want to give any bad ideas, but at least once I told him, I was like, hey, let's switch radios so we can talk across, you know. I did just little things like that. And obviously, I was doing this to work through school, but obviously they could tell that this was not being productive. And so I was having a, a, not, not the best time in canvassing. And my leader at the time she did something that really touched my heart. Instead of her pulling me to the side and was like, you know what, we know you're doing this, this, and this, she, she didn't do that. Uh, she pulled me to the side and had a talk with me. Now that leader, um, her name was Tara Vetter at the time. It was Vetter. I don't know if anyone, does anyone know Tara Vetter? Okay, some, two people know Tara, Tara Vetter. She was my leader when I was in high school. And she pulled me to the side one day and she had a talk with me but her talk wasn't just about, she did talk about the idea that, you know, you know things aren't seem like, you seem like you're struggling here. And, but she had a talk with me about my spiritual welfare. She talked to me, she had a heart-to-heart -heart talk with me, and that moved me so much that the next day I said, you know what, I'm going to try hard in canvassing. And I tried hard in canvassing. I still didn't make a lot of books. The school ended up having to move me to another program, but that never left me. I was like, wow, she seemed like she cares. So years later, of course, my whole experience, um, you know, Lord gave me a conversion experience, all these different things happened, and I, I Bible worked for the first year in Memphis, Tennessee, and that year I ended up uh, going to GYC. A friend of mine was like, you need to come to this, to this GYC. I'd never heard of GYC, and so he's like, you need to come, and I was like, well, is it going to be like a lot of those other youth programs I've gone to? No, I don't think I'll go, but he said, no, I promise it's not like that. You should come. I went, and really thoroughly enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. That Sunday, I think Washita Hills used to, and they, maybe, they may still do this, but they used to um, help out in the food line. Uh, I think it was on a Sunday. And that Sunday, they were helping out in the food line, and I see in the front of the food line, Tara Vetter. And I was like, wow, like, what are you doing here? You know, we just, we were able to catch up. We were talking, we were able to uh, catch up with each other. And I was so excited to tell her about my conversion experience. And she was like, praise the Lord. And, they, and for some reason, she said, you know what? You need to check out this school, Washtenaw Hills. I'm, I'm going to school, Washtenaw Hills. I love it. She was saying all these great things. She's like, you need to check it out. And I'm thinking like, no, no, no. I don't need to go to Washtenaw Hills. Like, this is, I just, you know, I know what the Lord wants me to do. And, but she said, yeah, this is so great. You need to check it out. She was insistent. She was a, still a canvasser. You should check it out. She said, this is what I want you to do. There's uh, one of our teachers is here. His name is Eugene Pruitt. You need to go over and talk to him. Tell him you want information about the school. And, you know, and I was like, I don't want to do this. But because it was Tara Vetter and because she had an impact on my life, I said, you know what? All those days I was not a good canvasser when I was working for her. For her sake, I'm going to talk to Eugene Pruitt. So Eugene Pruitt's in line, and I happen to see him, and I go over to him. I was like, hey, look, you know, I'm a friend of Tara Vetter's whatever, whatever, and he said, yeah, yeah, he said, you know, I'm in line right now. He said, I really want to talk to you. Let me just give you my number. Okay, so I got his number, and I said, I'll call you. And then I thought in my mind, I don't know why I'm going to call. I really don't want to call him. I was like, I don't even want to go to this school. I said, you know what? But because Tara Vetter asked me to do this, I'm going to do it because if I ever see her again, I want her to know that, you know, at least I followed through. It wasn't God's will. But I followed through with it. <laughs> and um, so after GYC, I called Eugene, and I talked to him over the phone really nice. He was telling me, you know, just not so much trying to, trying to get me to the school, but, you know, how do you know God's will in your life, just various things. I was like, wow, that was really nice of him. After he finished, I was like, well, I'll probably never see him again. And I have to tell you, I'm a minimalist. Like, I like throwing things away. I like clearing out my email. I like clearing out my phone. So if I, if I have someone in my phone, hate to confess this, if I don't call them a lot, I'm like, delete. And so I figured, I'm not going to call him ever again. I'm not going to see him ever again. So I was like, I deleted his number. Well, after this, I knew I was going to Bible work in, um, in Kentucky. I was going to Louisville, Kentucky, the next place I was going to Bible work. And as soon as I get there, I talk to one of the Bible workers, and she's like, yeah, this is going to be great. You know, she's like, you know, these, we're planning this, we're planning that. And guess what I just found out? The church has canvassers coming. And I was like, really? She's like, yeah, school, Washita Hills. They're great canvassers, they're coming. And guess who else is coming? Eugene Pruitt. 
I was like, I was like, I can't get away from this guy. And I was like, oh boy. I was like, man, I deleted his number. Ah, oh, this is, I, wonder, I hope he doesn't feel a certain way about it. Well, sure enough, they show up. They eventually, I think it was earlier in that, in that, um, that year, they showed up. And, and I was like, hey, you know, um, I don't know if you remember me. He's like, not really. You know, he's like, I meet a lot of people. And I was like, yeah, yeah, you know. I was like, oh, no problem. No, no worries. <laughs> and, but while they were there, I would go and hear the, uh, the canvassers, I mean, the worships. Like, it was myself and some other Bible workers, we'd go hear the worships, and I was really fascinated. It was like, hearing his worships was like, was like a refreshment to myself. I was like, wow, like, how does he pull that from the Bible? And I was really excited about that. So eventually, um, I would talk to him a, a little bit here and there. And while I was there in, in um, Kentucky, God started really sharing, pressing, impressing upon my heart that I need to get more training. I talked to the pastor about it, I talked to some of the evangelists about it. Uh, and it was like, you know, I was like, man, I just feel like I, I like what I'm doing. I know the Lord's blessing, but I feel like I need to get more training in this, in this uh, by work. Uh, actually, when I first got there, maybe part of it was because I was struggling <laughs> that first month. But I was like, I feel like I need to get, get some training in this Bible work thing. Well, Eugene, before they left, I went to talk to him. And actually, I started talk, thinking about another school. There was another school that I was thinking about maybe going to. And my elder at church had told me about it, and I was really thinking about it. I didn't want to go to an ordinary school. I was like, you know what? Maybe that school would be the one to go to. But someone was like, hey, you know, you should probably talk to, to Eugene Pruitt about this. And you just, you know, he might give you some good counsel. So I did. I went to him. I talked to him. And he did. He gave me some good counsel. Still, it wasn't really like you should come to our school or anything like that. It was just counsel on, um, you know, um, these are just some things, you know, you should look for, God's will for your life. And he told me before he left, and by the way, he gave me his number again. He gave me his phone number. He says, you know, if ever you want to call, here's my number. Um, and I can't remember if he gave me some information. It seemed like he may have given me some information about Washita Hills. And I was like, okay, that's really nice, but I'm like, I'm not going here. And, and then he told me, he says, a really good book to read is Fundamentals of Christian Education. He said, do you have that book? I was like, yeah, I, got I have that book. Yeah, sure, I have that book. Well, what I didn't know is that Fundamentals of Christian Education and Education are two different books. I didn't know that. And so I went back. I was thinking education. <clears throat> so I went back, and I was like, oh, I'm going to have to read this book. I'm reading this book, Education, and I'm going to start reading this for my devotions in the morning. Well, here's the thing about uh, Bible work, a Bible worker's life. Generally, well, let me just give you this idea. It's, we have more Bible studies in the evening. Does that make sense? Like, do, do you know why we do that? Because people are home. They're generally working in the morning, kind of like canvassers, they go out a little later. So they're working in the morning, and then they get home. So then your day sort of starts like in the afternoon. You're kind of preparing. In the morning is when you do all the other stuff you need to do. So in the evening, you go out, and then when you get back, you, there's certain things you want to do before you rest that night. You want to take your notes. You want to do, there's little things you want to do. So I would go to bed later. And then I would wake up later. But I was like, Lord, I really want to spend some time with, in this book. Now, I was having devotion, but it was a little later, but I would do some other things. But I was like, I really want to spend some time in this book. So I was like, Lord, if, if, if you really want me to, to do this, then wake me up at 6 o'clock in the morning. Now, you probably say, well, what's the big deal about that? Well, here's the thing. I was staying at the time at, a, at the church. It was first church in Louisville, Kentucky. Behind the church, they have a school, and, the, and next to the school, they have a trailer, which was like an extension from the school. And you didn't, if you stayed in the trailer, your phone reception, you, you didn't get any good phone reception at all. And so my phone was kind of, uh, at the time, was kind of, um, it was, my clock on my phone worked by the reception I had. Like, if I didn't have good reception, my time would be all over the place. And I also didn't have a clock in my room. So I would have to literally step out to see what time it is, and say, oh, this is it's time for me to wake up and go back in my room. But which means I would have to wake myself up to do that. Do you understand what I'm getting at? But I really, really want to read this book, Education. So I'm in uh, this, I'm staying behind back in this trailer, and God did something very miraculous for me. God knows that I love birds, uh, particularly raptors. I like raptors, hawks, falcons, eagles. I saw an eagle on my way over here. God knows, like, those are the things that make me happy. Well, there was a hawk. I can tell a hawk's sound. 
A lot of birds, I may not always tell mockingbirds, but hawks, I can tell a hawk sound, sound. There was a hawk that was staying there on campus in one of the trees. And there was a tree, it didn't stay next to my window. I was in the trailer, I was staying in the trailer. Uh, it was staying in one of the trees in the area. But every morning that hawk would fly over to where my window was and it started just crying out. And I wanted to, the first morning I was like, wow, it's a hawk, I wanted to see the hawk. So I woke up, I looked at the hawk and I was like, wow, I wonder what time it is. So I stepped outside of the trailer to look at my clock. It was exactly the time I needed to get up. It's like, wow, well, since I'm already up, I'll read. The next morning, the hawk did the same thing. I was like, I wonder what time it is. So I went, stepped outside, exact time I needed to get up. Guess I'll read. This happened every morning that I was there in Louisville, Kentucky, to the time I left. God woke me up every morning. I knew that was God. And if it was any other bird, I would have been like, oh, please. It was a hawk. <clears throat> so I woke up, and I was reading this book. And at the time, I, was, I, was, I started to get more interested because I was going to go to another school. So I started getting more and more interested in the school, and I started calling the school and having this contact with the school. And they were really nice. They were like, yeah, you should, you should come. And, and then finally, over this period of time, by the way, I didn't think I was going to see Eugene Pruitt again, so guess what I did with his, his phone number? <laughs> I deleted it. Guess what I did with the information that he gave me? Threw it away. Sorry, that was, that was money, right? <laughs> Threw it away. I was like, I'm not, I didn't even know how to say Washita Hills at the time. I didn't know how to spell it. It was like, oh, you are Chita. I don't know, I didn't know anything about how to, how to, and that's very important because, so I'm going through this whole, whole period, and then finally I was contacting this school, and one day as I was contacting this school, they were saying, you know, we really, everything's going smoothly. All we have to do is look at your finance situation, your finances, and, and if that goes through, then you're coming next semester. I was like, wow, I was really excited. I was telling my parents, telling everyone about it, getting up, reading education, trying to prepare my heart to go to this school. And then one uh, day, I was, um, I, was at the, I was getting a phone call back from the school, and the school said, look, we have good news, we have bad news. Good news is everything went well. Bad news is your financial situation, we don't think we could take you this semester but you can come next semester. And I was thinking to myself, my heart dropped. I was like, God, I thought you were leading this here. You were impressing my heart. I've been studying this in the Word. I know this is what you want me to do. Like, what? Like, I thought you were leading. My heart dropped. I didn't know how to handle disappointments back then. And so the next day, I was like, you know what? I don't think I want to read education. I'm just going to wake up late and do whatever else. I was like, yeah, I was just disappointed, just depressed. I shouldn't be depressed for something like that small, but I was. The next morning, the hawk came. <laughs> Cry went out. I was like, I don't want to get up. I don't want to get up. But then I felt impressed. You should get up. So I got up. And I was like, I don't want to read education. You should read education. All right, I'll, I'll read education. Started reading education. Closed the book. Started praying. And as I started praying, this is later on, by the way. This is the summer's gone. We've had two groups of canvassers come, one from Washita Hills, one from the summer, and it's, it's on into the, you know, our, our, I think our meetings were over at the time. And I'm praying, and I get really, really impressed. You should look up that school Eugene Pruitt is at. And I was like, Lord, I don't know, I don't know how to spell the school's name. I've thrown away all the information. I deleted his number. Like, I don't even know how to Google this thing. And I was like, but I felt so strongly impressed. You should look up that school where Eugene Pruitt, um, where, he, where he was going, Tara was telling you about. And so I told the Lord, I said, Lord, if you want me to go there, then you're going to have to help me to find out how to get a hold of somebody or something where I can get information to the school. Because right now, I have nothing. I'll say, Lord, at your word, I'm going to leave this place. I'm going to go over to the church where the Internet was, and I'm just going to Google this school. Finish my prayer. I get up, get dressed, get ready to go over to school. I open the door uh, of the trailer I was in, and suddenly I see this van in the parking lot. I was like, who's here this early in the morning? But that van looks very familiar. It was a Ford, um, I don't know, it was like 350. It was a 15-passenger gray van. Anyone remember that van? <laughs> and I was like, where did that van come from? And I was like, it looks familiar, but I have no clue who it is. And I'm walking in the parking lot, and then I'm trying to go around the van. It's like, I know this van. I've seen this van before, but I don't. 
And suddenly I hear the door on the other side, on the passenger side van, open and shut. And I was like, oh, I'm going to find out who this is now. And I walk across the, uh, around the van, and when I get around the van, lo and behold, it was Heidi Pruitt. The very day I was praying. I'm like, what? And she's, you know, she's like, hey, how are you doing? I'm sure she probably thought, like, what is he so excited to see us about? But I was like, well, I can't believe this. And so I was like, where is Eugene? She's like, oh, he's inside. He's eating breakfast. And I go inside. I was like, I was so excited. I was like, hey, hey. And, you know, he's, he's, really, he's really calm about this. And I'm like, I can't believe it. You, don't, you wouldn't know what, what just happened. I was praying. I was felt impressed. I was just impressed today. I need to contact you. I had no, and you, can, like, you know, I was just so excited. And he's like, yeah, okay, well, you know, there's other ways you can find God's will, you know, and you can't just go off the impressions. And I'm like, yes, yes. He's like, you, you need to look for this. And I'm like, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. You're right, you're right. But you can't believe what just happened to me today. And I'm so excited. And he says, well, I'll tell you what. I'll give you some information. I'll give you that. And he gave me his number again, gave me some information. And he says... <laughs> And he says, you know, and, and, and he's like, well, we'll stay in touch. And, you know, these are some of the things you would probably want to do if you want to look into the school. So I was like, all right, I'll, I'll look into that. And I left. And by the way, before I left, I asked him, what brought you here? And he told me this, at least from what I remember. He said, you know, I have a lot of places I'm vis- I was visiting this summer. And as I was looking over a map, you know, if you know Eugene, he's always like, he's, like he ha- he's very strategic about how he does things. <laughs> he says, I was looking for, over my map. I noticed that the church here... Was, um, was, was like central to all the places I need to go. So I called the pastor, thought I'd park the van here, and I'll fly out of Louisville to these various places. And it just so happens that he was coming in to park the van, getting ready to leave out to go to the airport, um, and, I just, and it just so happened he does that on the day I'm praying. You think that was God or was that just, no, that wasn't coincidence. I, I believe that was God. So I'm really impressed now. And... I start to say to myself, well, I'm going to this school. I start to get everything, and lo and behold, they, he's like, look, you should, you, know, you should come. All these things, he said, there's a few little things you need to get ready, and you should come. So I knew that it was God's will for me to leave, or for me to come here. Now, there was one thing, even in the midst of this, and this is so important, because sometimes if you see God leading, it doesn't mean that he doesn't give room for doubt. Like, he, you still have the option or the opportunity to doubt. And I had that opportunity. And I can remember, you know, I talked to the pastor. I ended up going back home to my parents' house to get ready to go to school. And I started getting all this information out. And I had, I think it was either two or three um, references I needed. And everything was going smoothly. Everything was working out. And then I, I had all my references except for one. I needed one more reference. And I knew that I wanted to get it from my chaplain at my academy. And so I went over and I dropped off a reference at, on his desk, and, or he was, he was in some, uh, some meetings because their school was about to start. So I dropped off a reference. I said, can you get this reference to him? And they said, yeah, sure, we'll get it to him. One day went by, I didn't hear from him. Next day went by, I didn't hear from him. The time was getting late for me. It was about time for me to go to school, and, or this time I was going to prepare to go to school, and I didn't have this reference. Oh, no, Washington Hills is not going to accept me. And I started doubting, God, is this really your will? I don't know, like, why, like, what's happening? I remember the, the weekend before I was starting to come, it was getting, it was a Friday, and it was getting late. And I don't have, I, for some reason, I can't remember all the details, but I remember I had to fax this information to the school. That was going to be the fastest way for me to do it. And we didn't have a fax machine in my house. We had to go to the local grocery store. But the problem is I didn't want to fax all the information because my chaplain from my high school hadn't, got, hadn't given me my reference yet. So I was waiting for him. And I went that morning to try to check, still couldn't catch up with him. So I was like, Lord, I don't know. I started really doubting. And then the evening started coming. I told my mom, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to fax whatever I have here. I said, Sabbath's coming on. I'm not going to worry about this on Sabbath. If they accept me, they accept me. If they don't, they don't. But I'm just going to fax what I have. So I'm going to go over to the store. She was like, okay. I get my, all the papers I have, uh, whatever I had, and then I was getting ready to go out the door, and for some reason, I don't know how I got this, but I had an extra application, like an ac- extra reference. And I was like, I should take that. So I took the reference with me. I'm going to the grocery store, and I'm going to fax these papers, and I get to the, the grocery store, 
And I'm about to, I'm getting out my car and I'm about to go in to, to fax these papers and I'm like, I have everything but one last reference. As I'm about to walk in, I see someone coming out of the grocery store out of all places. It was my chaplain. <laughs> I have one blank reference. I go to him, I was like, listen. I said, have you had a chance to fill out that, that reference? He said, yeah, yeah, I was going to do it. I've just been busy. I saw it on my desk. He's like, yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to do it. And I was like, I actually need it right now. He's like, oh, man. He's like, I, I wish I could fill it out if I had a, the application. I was like, don't worry. <laughs> I have it right here. <laughs> and he filled out that application, and we prayed together. And I went in, and I faxed that paper. And there were some other things that happened. But long story short, I ended up here. And I knew it was God's will for me to be here. I often look at that story, and that story has been an encouragement to me because it reminded me later as I was reading through this passage through Testimonies, Volume 5. And, every, and when I remember the first time reading this, I was like, wow, that was my experience. God had shown me through his word and through the counsel of Ellen White that this school was trying to follow those principles. God had impressed upon my heart through the work of the Holy Spirit, maybe even sometimes through failures, that I needed to get extra training. I knew it was the Holy Spirit. And God had worked powerfully through providence to show me, to open the door for me to be here. And it reminded me of this statement in, um, so let me just pull it up here. Testimonies, volume 5, page 512. And I've used this for other areas of my life. We're told, there are three ways in which to, the Lord reveals his will to us to guide us and to fit us to guide others. How may we know his voice from that of a stranger? We're talking about wanting to know God. Well, it's important to know, wanting to know God, you want to know his voice, isn't that correct? And then it says, how shall we distinguish it, the, it the, from the voice of a false shepherd? God reveals his will to us in his word, the Holy Scriptures, It's number one. His voice is also revealed in his providential workings. And it will be recognized if we do not separate our souls from him by walking in our own ways, doing according to our own wills, and following the promptings of an unsanctified heart, until the senses have become so confused that eternal things are not discerned, and the voice of Satan is so disguised that it, it, it is accepted as the voice of God. Another way in which God's voice is heard is through the appeals of the Holy Spirit, making impressions upon the heart which will be wrought out in the character. If you are in doubt upon any subject, you must first consult the scriptures. And when I looked at those three principles, I was like, wow, Lord, you used that in my life then, and God still uses it in my life today. If you're in doubt of anything, if you feel like, wow, this is the providence of God, but I'm not really sure, go back to scripture. If you feel like, man, I feel like I'm really impressed to do this, go back to scripture. And God uses that to guide us, to hear his voice. And the more we learn to hear it, I mean, it's a joyful thing when you know that God is leading your life. You can really, really see the blessing. And I know that God can do that, and he wants to do that for each and every one of us. This morning, we have a little bit of, not, not too much time. We have like, well, time is like there. But I want to encourage you, if, you just, if we can just pray silently. I'm going to pray, but then I want you, if you feel impressed, you want to stay back and pray just silently before you, before you leave, or just leave quietly for those who may want to pray uh, to respect their short time with God. Uh, I want to encourage you to do that, but specifically praying, Lord, teach me to hear your voice. Teach me to align my life with the voice of Scripture. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father in heaven, thank you so much for your love for us and how you want to lead us and the experiences you give us that increase our faith. Lord, we praise you, teach us how to hear your voice. I pray that we become so in love with scripture that we won't draw from it to know your will, but we'll draw to it so we can get clarity as what is it that we can do, we should be doing to please God. Help us to make the word of God our guide. Help us to know how to discern the voice of your spirit. Help us know how to watch for your providence. Lord, we thank you for your mercies in this area. Jesus name. We are so pleased you could join us here at Watchtower Hills Academy and College. 
And if you have enjoyed this presentation as much as I have, like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Also, if you would like to support the making of these programs, you can find the donation information in the description below. Thank you so much for joining us, and may God richly bless you.